welcome everybody to Rob Howard's workshop on, sorry, on what? <laughs> that was the first slide. <laughs> on present perfectly using images. Uh, I can't remember the title. What was it again? It's rethinking the image on the screen, but we can go to this one and we'll rename it Screen Gemming, Simplifying Your On-Screen Images for Better Retention. That is fantastic. I would like to let everyone know who Rob is and uh, if you could also just type in the text chat who you are in the audience and what brings you to this workshop, why you're interested in that very subject and uh, what you think you can get out of it. <laughs> Now, Rob is an owner of Online Language Center, partner at Business Language Training Institute and founder of EFL Talks. He is a speaker worldwide on teacher development, continuing professional development, student retention and image presentation. He is joint coordinator at the IATEFL Basic Online Team, online and video coordinator and video interviewer for the Visual Arts Circle which we will hear more about it at uh, the Virtual Roundtable, and president of the Brass Tiesel Basic, as well as co-founder with Dorothy, Dorothy Zemak, who made history at IATEFL this year. Dorothy Zemak, and they are co-owners of the independent, co-founders of the Independent Authors and Publishers Group. He has authored and co-authored several books for EFL. He was nominated for the 2016 British Council Elton Award for Innovation and Teacher Development. That was EFL Talks and well, a resource well worth looking for. And welcome everybody in the workshop. I'm really thrilled not for two things, for two reasons. One of which is that Rob was the only one courageous enough to try with me this new workshop format. And the second reason is that he promised to redo this workshop after mine <laughs> with hopefully a larger audience. We've had 12 people sign up for the workshop, so four of you are here, which is fantastic. I'm also happy and looking forward to working with Rob and doing what he suggests, and I pass over to him. Thank you for being Great. Well, thanks, Heike. It's a pleasure to be here, and I uh, thank you for the opportunity. And most people that know me know I'm a little crazy, which is why I said, yes, I'll try to make a workshop work. But what I want to talk about today is screen gemming and basically talking about simplifying the image that we're showing. And I'm talking mostly for students, but this is for everybody. This is presentations. This is even if we're doing... Um, you know, business work with uh, presentations at work. And we've gotten to the point because we have technology, we're actually, I feel, overusing it. And again, this is an opinion, this is something different. And it's something to consider because, as we know, um, I know Heike and I are youngsters. Uh, Phil, I, you know, I saw you, I think you, what? early 30s, and I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sure you're like in your 20s. Um, you know, people don't learn today like we used to learn. And we, as teachers, need to start reacting to what our learner needs. And not <laughs> you're very welcome. It was a compliment. Um, we have to react to what they need, not what we feel we need to give them. But let's go on. What I did here is, uh, this is part of a bigger presentation that I've been doing now for about a year. And what I purposely do is I purposely use PowerPoint and only paint. Because a lot of people that I talk to have Macs, they can do fancy programs, great. But what I want to show is that any teacher anywhere, as long as you have a computer that has PowerPoint and paint, you can make a good looking presentation. You don't need to get the fancy equipment. So that's why it's down and dirty. So this is a follow up workshop that I've just developed for my big talk, as I said, which is present perfectly, 
which is what we're advertising here. So, why did I call it screen gemming? Because we're going to go into the caves and we're going to start mining people's minds. So I thought the nice little play on words. And hopefully anybody from Sony is not watching and sues me for using Screen Gems logo. But what I want to talk about is what's happening. With technology, we're being bombarded with images, with sounds, with talk, with text all the time. And we're seeing this everywhere we go on television, on any time you open up a web page, we have a million pop-ups. I can't even watch a video anymore because I'm getting ads inside my videos. And what's happening is we've reached a point where the brain just basically explodes. Not really, but we're reaching a point of sensory overload because we see too much and we're actually shutting off some of the things that we're seeing. So it's kind of like uh, with what we put on the screen, it's kind of a where's Waldo of learning. You know, when we fill up the screen, where is it? Well, Waldo's right here. And the thing that I'm promoting and what we're going to work on in the workshop today is simplification. A simple image and just a few words, and going back to just a simple, basic screen, and not getting fancy with tech, because we have tech. Now, what you will find is that by simplicity and just going with basic, we're actually increasing exactly, Giselle. We make a bigger impact. We're increasing the effectiveness of what we're actually showing. And it takes the average person just three seconds to make a decision when they see something on whether that's important to them or not. You know, think about newspaper headlines. We see it and we know immediately, oh, am I going to read this article or not? And everybody knows this and Facebook knows it. Um, if you look at metrics in the videos on Facebook, People are only watching for three to ten seconds on most videos and they've made up their mind and they'll either shut off or watch the entire video. So we are a visual society but we haven't embraced that yet. And yeah, it is this attention deficit. We're, we're actually training people for attention deficit. But think about how we are now. You know, we have an international language of visuals. Like, you see this. This is in Poland. I'm in Poland right now. And I don't speak Polish. And I don't read Polish. I know a little. But we don't need to know a language anymore. Because we see this and we know what's there. A telephone. We see this sign and we know there's an exit. Well, this is a sign right outside my door, and I'm really not sure because I don't know the Polish, but it's either clean up after your dog or give your dog an enema. I was never quite sure. Um, but this is what we're doing now in class, is we're putting up all these information on the slide, and there's just too much. It's like, what's my point here? Yes, nice pictures, nice visuals, a little wordle, and we're doing everything, but my main point that I was trying to make is brainstorming. But somebody's looking maybe over at, you know, the brain over here. Someone's looking at the light bulb. And we're not focusing the learner or the audience on what it is we want them to focus on. Um, even worse is when we throw up a wordle and we expect students to learn something. Now, Wordle is great if you build the Wordle yourself. Don't get me wrong. But to just throw this up on the screen and expect you to get more than maybe two, maybe three words, it's, it's a waste of time because learners will not take it in. And what's even worse is we see this at presentations all the time, but we even see it in the classroom. Um, I use it here with quotations, but it's too much text on the screen. There's way too much text. P 
People will not sit and read that. And worse, they're going to shut off if you sit there and read this to your students. Uh, this is what, when I do the big presentation, if you take nothing else, I want you to remember this. Text plus talk equals nothing. Because when we see a big text on the screen, and when we're talking, we tend to be visual. So really, they're not getting the message that we're talking about and we're explaining. So remember this. Now, I've studied neurolanguage coaching recently, and um, you know we go through all the different things with the brain. I can talk about how repetition goes into short-term memory. We need consolidation, but it's not important. Um, you can do that when you get into big studies. What I can tell you is this was a study that was done um, recently. And what they found is when you're looking at what students and what people are retaining for the length of time and the most accurate, it's the eyes have it. Better retention, better accuracy for much longer if it's something that we see and we record rather than just something that we hear. Okay, a quick little quiz for you. And I just want to give you a, a rough idea of what I'm talking about. Ready? Don't blink. Ah, no, I'll go back. Okay. Type one or two of the things that you saw. If you can tell me what you saw for words. Uh-oh, you guys are too good. All right. Well, take a look here. What I usually find, oh, there we go, dog, elephant, monkey. What I usually find when I do this, and I normally do it with um, bullet points, but I didn't do it here, is that people tend to miss the adjective until they see the picture. So when they see the words along with the visual, they actually have taken in more. And it's the point of using an effective visual to back up the text that I'm showing. Okay, so what I'm talking about is tr going back and using a single message per slide. Now, I teach a lot of lawyers um, in Brazil mainly, and what we found is we did a lot of uh, research and we found there is no law to how many slides you can use in a PowerPoint. Nowhere in the world. Because if, as I said, as we increase simplicity, we increase effectiveness. As we increase the slide count, we're actually increasing the engagement level. As engagement goes up, so does attention. As attention goes up, so does comprehension, which leads to better retention and recall accuracy. And this is what we're trying to teach. So we're looking to just work with a simple image and one or two words at the most that will reinforce the point we're trying to make, make an imprint on learner's memory and make an impact on them overall. As they say, a picture tells a thousand words. And I hope you're all laughing on the other side. Okay? So, think about it. When we teaching an essay, do we go in and we teach them the title, conclusion, first argument, intro, everything all at once? No. What we do is we break this down into small things. First we teach them the first argument, and then we teach them how the first argument fits in to the entire one. Now, with just three slides, I did exactly the same thing. So I can show with three slides how each small piece works as part of the whole very easily and it makes more impact. 
you know, what we've been doing is with PowerPoint now, here's what we always do. We fill it up with words. We say, oh, there's too many words. You can't see it. So I'll underline it. We make it bold. We change the color. We change the font. You know, then we start going through and we animate everything. And then we add a little kitten because it's cute. Okay. So now it's your turn. We're going to do a little workshop, and let's see, we have, uh, Heike, what do you think? Why don't we just keep them here and do it with the four? Sound good to you? Whatever. Uh, no problem. Yep. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We want you guys to work together, and what we're going to work on is I want you to come up it's always present perfect, isn't it? How would you present to a class the present perfect in seven slides so you can make an impact? So what we want you to do is work together and you all ready and you're up for that? I'm going to turn on all your microphones and we'll see how it goes. Everybody okay? All and you right. Have to tell us how to work together. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do first is I'll turn on your mics. And then what we're going to do is up at the top, above where it says screen gemming, you'll see a little microphone. You click on that till it turns green. Now, um, if you read the instructions, people were supposed to bring along some pictures to present Present Perfect. And what we're going to do, I want everybody tell me if you have a picture. Anybody brought an image along with you? Has anybody brought any images? I have some images. Great, Daniela. Okay. Um, let's see. So, Daniela, I'm going to give you... I'm going to request, request screen share. And can you bring up one of the images? Okay, and as this is loading, has anybody turned on their microphone? You can say hi. Daniela, I think you can say hi. Hello. <laughs> hi. Good. We can hear you. Giselle, can you just say hi? Hello, everyone. Hi. Breaking up a little bit. And Oksana, can you say hello? Hi there. Hello. Bill, you're still muted. It's okay. You forgot your homework. We'll forgive you this time. Uh, I'm embarrassed. That's okay. You know, you 30-year-olds, you know, you're all the same. Yeah, actually, when you get to my age, we forget stuff. <laughs> right. Well, let's see. We're trying to get this image up. I guess this bandwidth. Is Daniela actually screen sharing, or is she uploading an image? Yeah, I believe it's screen share. Did you request? A screen yeah. share, or did he start that? I requested screen requested share. requested it. I uh, did. Then she had to obviously say yes to it. Ah, there we go. Okay. My mistake. We're learning. That's why you guys are an experiment here. <laughs> okay, so let's see an image, Daniela. 
could you minimize Adobe Connect because we don't see anything uh, if you open Adobe Connect. Just keep it minimized and then we see your browser, the one with, we just saw. Hi Hamza. Would it be better if she uploaded an image? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do that. Okay. Let me. So revoke screen share. Hi, yeah. Miriam. Okay. So now, let me remember how to upload. Um, and wouldn't it be possible that we could give everyone the opportunity to upload? Okay, why don't we do that so, now? Remind so we'll give everyone a little SharePoint and everybody can upload just ah, an image. Ah, that's right, SharePods. Yeah. Oksana, I hope you're taking notes. So, add another one. Okay. Another two. So everyone, we can even write the names on the top. Say, the first one is Daniela. So if, Daniela, if you could click on share document, which is the arrow next to share my screen. And the second one will give to Giselle. Okay. I hope she can see that. Giselle, she's on the mobile. It could possibly be that she cannot upload something. Yeah, maybe not. But let's try it, see if she can. And then we'll know whether it'll work from the phone or not. Oksana gets the third one, and Phil, you might just drag any odd image up, or or I give it myself. Okay, how about me? Okay. Uh, so. All right, we'll have Phil come up with the words since he didn't do the homework. Hasn't? All right. Good. Okay, so in order to upload, click upload, on share upload document, up. and then browse my computer. Yep. So just to the right of share my screen, click the down arrow, and then share document. And when it does browse, just bring it up, please. And we'll get a few documents up here, and then we'll see what we're going to do. Here we go. We have happy holidays. Oh, OK. And I'm supposed to say the present perfect tense of that image or as well or not? Now, how would you use this image? What words would you add to the screen, if any? And how would you work with this image in order to teach present perfect? Good question. <laughs> Good question. Next question. Um, I, I can't have really see worn my Christmas tree outfit today. Mm, very nice, Phil. I yeah, have. But you don't see that really. She's been ice skating, but she did, she was ice skating, right? I was thinking I have decorated myself. Oh, lovely. Okay, Oksana, the sharing button where you have, you should see a screen, and it says share my screen. There's a drop-down menu, and it says share document. Click on that, it should open browse, and you can upload. Strange that, that Daniela's uh, share pot doesn't seem to have that button, <laughs> that colorful button. Isn't that weird? Yeah. <laughs> You don't have that option? Of course not, because you're all participants. Silly me. Thank you. Apologies. I have to promote you to presenter status. Ah, oops. Uh, oh, I thought it would do it automatically if it had a share screen. There we go. No, they don't see this. Now that, now you are able to click right. Sorry <laughs> Apologies. About yes, and that's why this is an experiment. <laughs> but don't click on share my screen, Phil. Just click on 
the arrow next to share my screen and then share document. All right, making an avatar. Very nice. Okay, cool. great. So we have April and Brussels. Okay. And that's Daniela. How would you use that? Any ideas? I think we can give Giselle's uh, to Phil. Right, so because uh, Giselle, she's on a mobile, she cannot upload really in Adobe okay. Connect. That's fine. She can present, but she cannot upload. Okay. As far as I know, I'm not sure, I think. Okay, so we have books. Let's take a look at the books. How could we use the books? Oh, we've been working since 10 a.m. That's nice for the continuous. How I have read, I have read all of them. <laughs> yeah. Or in my case, I haven't read any of them. All right. <laughs> um, ooh, I like the one about therapy. I won't say it out loud since we're being recorded. <laughs> nice title. Next to Games of Thrones. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. I have stopped watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> how about yeah. the, How about the Caesar salad and the chicken? So you you now opened the previous slide. Can I just stop sharing that one again? Um, and perhaps if you fill, if you click on the arrow next to share my screen and uh, say share document. That one, and yeah. then, and then browse my computer at the bottom yeah. left. Okay. Would you want another image? Oh no, this is Phil's, right? The top left. Oh, oh I'm, we'll I'm top left. Yeah, I don't. Do you, you don't yeah, I think I think Daniela uh, hasn't done one yet. Oh, I think okay. I think I no. possibly stole Daniela's accidentally. Because Oksana's is down there. The season chicken is Oksana's. Okay. And then, okay, I'm going to give this to Daniela then. Great. Oh, so those are your books, Phil. They're my books, yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, and this is Daniel's. Okay, gotcha. Now. Very good. Do we have five windows open? Is that maybe why? And they're jumping around? No, because Daniel has now claimed the top right. Okay, good. All right, so that's, I've been working since 10 a.m., or we've been working. How about the Caesar and chicken salad or whatever, which looks delicious. Hi, make yourself at home. I'm just finishing something. Just make yourself at home. Do you want a drink? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you talking to us, Phil? <laughs> uh, so, no, sorry, some visitors have just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot my mic was still on. <laughs> lovely, lovely uh, invitation, you know. Make I yourself know. at home. <laughs> I That's wanted why I'm you. Using my mic. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> wait. Oh god. <laughs> would you like a drink, Rob? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, whiskey. I would. <laughs> I <thought> sure. <laughs> That's good. Cup of tea. Very, very British. Coffee. Nice. Well, I recognize this meal, actually. <laughs> Oksana. How would Sorry, you... Daniela. First of all, I steal your screen, and then I... <laughs> <laughs> and then you try and get her drunk. You know? No, no, not, no, not Daniela. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have fun. We have. Uh, I'm going to have to apologize because I'm going to need to go soon. I'm sorry about this. No problem. I'm glad you could show up. And... Um, yeah, this is the pre-conference event, is it, Heike? Yeah, and it's the, the special workshop format. And Rob is the only one. I mean, I asked so many, but Rob was the only one who said he's crazy enough to try it with me. We are yeah. trying a workshop format. 
Right. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I've n I, I I can't remember doing this in Adobe before. This kind of everyone sharing screens like this, and just uploading images like this. Yeah, I I've, I've never seen. You in control. Yeah, I've never seen it done. So that's why we're trying to see what we can do and how we could use it in the future. Okay. So thank you, Rob. Uh, great apologies. A thousand apologies. Do they say? Um, that I need to go. No and problem. Okay. Take care of my guests who have just arrived. Yes. Well, unless you have more computers and we can bring them in and they can take part. <laughs> <laughs> Probably good. It's a bit short notice, but uh... <laughs> right. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, Thank you for that, Rob. And thanks, nice to Phil. see you in the flesh. Not in the flesh, but nice to hear you for the first time, properly. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Okay. So, um, any some more pictures? Give me some more examples. And Gisela's done a nice sentence with the Caesar and salad thing. I haven't eaten chicken since I became vegan. Very nice. And I think probably audio for Caesar. Um, Daniela, do you wanna? Uh, you, you killed your image now. Yeah. Are you bringing another one in, Daniela? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And all right, good. That coming in. And if anyone has another one, they can bring in. Oh, very nice. Lovely. That's Lovely. a great image. One of my students made it uh, earlier this week. Oh, great. Very nice. Astronomy, art, and uh, children's literature, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, and while you're thinking of that, let's see, Oksana, I've made enough for everybody to share. Um, I'm trying to remember where we saw this meal. Is this from Smokies? It is. Yeah? That was Aya Teflon. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I, I only had fish and chips the whole day, every day, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I either had fish and chips or barbecue. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen such an interesting conversation before. <laughs> ah, lovely mayhem. <laughs> nice. Um, have you read The Sense of Style? No, I have no style. Look what I'm wearing. Um, <laughs> kidding. How about the one with Geppetto? How could we use this? Anybody have a good phrase we could put up with this? For Geppetto? Yeah. Now has your student painted this? Or have you done it? One of my students. Yep. Yeah. Have you done it? Very nice. One of my students has drawn this or painted. Looks like drawing. Mm -hmm. Right. Painted and drew and uh, cut it out and <laughs> stuck. Very nice. And let's see. Lovely. Pay attention to time here. Okay, um, well, do you see what we can do just using, have you seen the original Van Gogh? Very nice. Or Van Gogh. Yes. You are in Brussels, right? You say Van Gogh? I think it's Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Yes. I'm American. You say Van Gogh. Beautiful, um, a beautiful uh, video out uh, on this, this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, great. All right. Well, that's good. I just wanted to see how the tech works, and I'll give you some ideas. Thank you all for participating.
But let me go back to, what should I just stop sharing everybody? Or one by um, one? Do you want to delete each of the pots or take them out or go back to your presentation? Um, well, I'll go back to the presentation. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just put a, t a pot on top of it. We'll, we'll keep the images in the background. Okay. And then you can just go to your presentation. All right. So I'm going to come back here. All right. So thanks. Let's go with this. Here's some ideas that I had. And I like to use my own pictures because then I don't have to pay for them or worry about copyright infringement. And in order to show people, I was thinking about things like this. And we're in Brazil, one of the things that we have done with um, people, because they do know the past perfect, but they don't have the present perfect. So they didn't understand the difference between present and past. But they did understand how past perfect works because it's exactly the same in Portuguese. So here's one. Okay. Yet. I should add yet to the end of this. But the idea is using simple images, but you want it to be something that the students can relate with. And what better if you're the teacher using your own image? Because then it makes some context sense to them. And what they'll do is they'll remember probably this phrase, I haven't been a pirate. I remember most of the French that I can remember were things that had very strong visuals in it when I was a kid. And this really embeds itself and makes an impact on you. I can't speak French anymore, but I still remember some of the phrases and I still remember the picture. I, for example, I can remember the first word I learned in French was le mal which is lobster, if you can understand my present, my pronunciation, because I saw it on a sweatshirt with a big picture of a lobster and then the word with it. And I was probably, that's probably 50 years ago, and I can still see that image. So if we're picking a memorable image, and we put the appropriate words and then have the appropriate discussion so we don't take away from being a pirate, the memory will be better. And I have been a teacher for 15 years, okay? Or I used to be skinny. Okay. So some considerations that we want to keep in mind while we're doing this. Um, first of all, be aware of the color choices that you use because color can have negative effects and it can have positive effects on you. I like to use either a solid back, black, black background because the words really pop out at you and the pictures tend to pop out. But then using colors like red, sometimes this can make people angry and argumentative. So work with appropriate colors, um, work with appropriate fonts, because the font can also make a difference. And you don't want people confused. Now, there is a study out right now that's being done that says sometimes using a difficult font to read might be better for long-term memory because you spend more time working on it. But there is no definitive uh, research yet, waiting to find out. Yes, the second is creepy. It's supposed to be. And 
when you're picking pictures, this is something from an MIT study back in Boston, where I'm from. Um, I take a lot of landscape pictures, and I used to always use landscape pictures for my backgrounds. And I find out they're actually the least effective image. The most effective image that you can use is humans, then familiar scenes, objects, and landscapes are last. And when I talk about familiar scenes, let's say the kitchen, the dining room, the bathroom, the school, the park, things that people can relate with. And learners and audiences seem to relate much better with other faces, watching other humans. Now, it's, um, it's been much easier because we use a lot of objects and a lot of landscapes because we're trying to avoid the problems with copyright infringement. But humans, you know, now we have to have permission. So it's becoming a little more difficult but you can use, there's a lot of, um, a lot of pictures on ELT pics. There's a lot of uh, Creative Commons pictures available. And use humans to really get people to connect. Um, the words you use, they should be fast, they should be focused, they should really be memorable. And you want just a little bit of tease on the screen to show that. Oh, thank you, Heike. And their goal as learners, they should understand, they should learn, and they should remember. But the only way we're going to do that is if we meet our goals of showing them something that they can learn from and can imprint and remember. And your goal, I always feel, when you're doing anything with the screen, is to show the ideas, not just show useless slides filled with a lot of pictures and information. Show an idea, because when you get them to think critically, as you know, we've been talking about a lot lately with critical thinking, we do a much better job of imprinting memories. Now, just some statistics for you, and I don't have to read these out loud. You can read. But this shows how important visuals are to our brain. And anybody who has a husband, boyfriend, knows this. Whatever you say, gone in 30 seconds. You know, they talk about the brain, and, you know, this is something that you'll hear in education. They say the brain is a funnel and directs the information where it is. But after teaching for 15 years, I really think that the brain is more of a filter and the brain is actually filtering out the information that we don't feel is that important and for language learning you know it's all important and we have to get past that filter and whether it's a student a teacher or corporations anything I think we need to get better at making more effective presentations and using more effective techniques, which is simplification, because we all have to use presentations eventually in our jobs. So my obligatory quote, show ideas, not slides. I couldn't find one, so I used me. And with that, um, you know, my apologies to Screen Gems. I appear courtesy of me, of me and Waldo. And if you, you know, if you want to get in touch, um, and see the full presentation, which should be available soon. This is the best way to contact me, the QR code, or you can just go through my landing site and you'll see all my presentations and projects that I do. But now, if you have any questions um, or any discussions, any thoughts, any feedback, I'd be happy to hear it. I have a question, may I? May yes. I? Okay, that um, each of our images, so you would have recommended to put this in the slide, small on the right hand side, and then add a present perfect sentence next to it. Either 
put a small picture with the present perfect next to it or you can always put it on top of the picture but you have to worry about coloring then and if you're going to see the words i did it this way for clarity so that you could see the words clearly now what was nice about your sentences was that and you, you asked us to come up with seven images correct yes so what is the uh, um in your case it seemed to have been a story and what do we say is most effective lately in teaching storytelling so i'm using everything as a story think about the old way that they used to teach present perfect they used to show us a timeline and i've always used a story it might be you know where i've lived in the past where I've worked in the past, what I've done in the past, and I use a story. Telling the story puts everything in time perspective without having to show them a timeline. And when they start thinking about it and they see the images, it sort of imprints, okay, now I see how the sentence structure works. Now I see, you know, where to break up the words and exactly how to use the grammar and they learn it on their own just by looking at it. That's what I found in Brazil. I have a feeling it's quite difficult to find seven images that connect in one story. It could be less. I just picked an arbitrary number of seven for this. Um, it doesn't have to be seven. For some things um, when you're dealing with vocabulary it could be just one simple picture. Uh, I'll give a great example. Um, teaching in Brazil, one of the vocabulary words in a book, teaching out of a course book, was wool. Now, of course, the place that I work, we um, weren't allowed to speak Portuguese in class, so I couldn't translate what the word was. And students in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro, are living in 50-degree weather, 40-degree weather. They don't know what wool is. So I said, wool, the thing that they use to make sweaters. They never heard of a sweater. I said, the thing that comes off of a lamb. They didn't know what that was. Wouldn't it have been nice if I had a picture of a sheep or a sweater or the material wool wrapped in a ball so they can understand better. But I didn't have that from the course book. So it could be one slide. Okay. Did you use paint with my images? Um, yes, I did actually. I brought uh, the images into paint or PowerPoint and did all the cropping and any cutting out that I had to do. For the pirate, yes, that was paint. <laughs> I'm the paint pirate. Yep. So, any other questions? I know we're running out of time, right? How are we doing on time? I think we're about five minutes. Yep, six minutes ago. But if if you could give me three minutes for a changeover. Because some might want to leave, some might want to stay, just to inform them. Okay. Well, I appreciate you being our first guinea pigs, and I've learned a lot on how to use this for our workshop and what we can possibly do, Heike. We see how it works. It can work. And I thought it was lovely the way you did it. And Rob, if I may <laughs> ask you, please, to redo the workshop just after mine. I mean, would you have time? I would be if, happy if to. If there is an audience, I mean, we just ask um, the audience whether they would like to experience this again with you. Because I thought it was lovely. It was absolutely adorable. Yeah. And really you know, I think, you know, it'll go sm a lot smoother for the next one now that we know, I know how to do it. I shouldn't say we, I should say. That's I. correct, Daniela. <laughs> so, 
the next hour, no, in one hour's time, sorry. In one hour's time, Rob will come back again if he if he is not <laughs> falling asleep during my workshop. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Great. That would be awesome. So, thank you very much. We'll ask the audience whether they're ready to stay on for another one, but uh, you are most welcome, Rob. I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you, thank and thanks for the opportunity, and thanks again, all of you, for helping out. We really appreciate it.